hey girl hey welcome back to my channel it's your girl misha thank you guys for joining me yet again for another review if this is your first time here and you've just discovered my channel please check out my other reviews and i thank you so much for hanging out if you've been here for a second or third time then welcome back please guys don't hesitate to like comment and subscribe i love you all for watching let's get into it so tonight we're going to be reviewing the bell collective season one episode four okay it really don't even matter what episode it is honey because i got something to say i am pissed okay do y'all hear me i am po'd all right let's get right on into it so tambria first of all i want to say happy black history month i just want to throw that in now let us move on so we open up the episode with tambria now i have tried so hard not to say this but i can't take it no more i cannot stand tambria's voice i just can't i can't take it if I have to hear, and I was thinking about having kids, but then I was like, my career is really taking off. I cannot, I cannot, I can't take it. It's like nails on a chalkboard. I literally had a headache after her scene. I cannot take it anymore. I don't care if she's talking to Barack Obama. I don't want to hear nothing else from Tambria. So I shall be fast forwarding through all her scenes. So I don't have much to give y'all. Now let's move forward. Letitia. Letitia meets with the city councilman. She meets with the contractor and the appraiser and they're on Ferris Street. So Letitia said, I don't care how many episodes I got to show y'all Ferris Street by the end of this season, I shall be in my building. Okay. So they're out there and they're talking about how the building is a historical building, but they drop a bomb on her and let her know that the building is not for sale. It's actually for lease. So Letitia was like, what? And Letitia, honey, I love you, girl, but that synthetic wig was shining so bright in the sun, shine bright like a diamond. I'm gonna need you to get that together. Don't do that no more. Anyway, that's just a side note. Let's get back to the business. So they tell her that to even start renovating this will be 900,000 to 1.5 million. And then they also say that it's gonna be like half a million for the acquisition. Now, my thing is this, if you're going to renovate a historical building and lease it, that doesn't make sense financially. I understand that you want this for the black people and you want us to get our buildings back and, and build this street up and bring it back to what it once was. But it doesn't make sense that you lease a building and put that much money into it because let's just say you're unable to fulfill your lease obligations. The next tenant will now reap the benefits of what you have worked so hard to accomplish. So yeah, we might wanna rethink that. I know you wanna go forward with it, but if I were your friends, I don't think that I would be ready to invest in something that we will not be owning. Okay, let's move on. Then we see Marie and Marie is meeting with the counselor with her son, Jerez. And um, Marie comes in with this recording. Okay, now what I didn't like about this is that Marie came in like, look, listen, listen to what he did to me. See, this is what he did to me. He said this, listen. And it was almost like a satisfaction type thing. And as he was listening to the recording, Marie was kind of sitting back like, mm-hmm, see what I gotta go through? Marie don't do that, okay? That's why the boy is punching holes in the wall now. Stop treating him like that, okay? I understand what he did was wrong, honey, because if I even look at my mama sideways, honey, that mouth getting popped. I don't care if you're 38 or eight, you're gonna get popped. But the thing is, you're doing it in such a way as to use it against him. It's like, I didn't do anything wrong, but he did. So here, listen. And even the counselor was like, don't record anything else and don't bring me any more recordings because that's stupid, okay? But what I did appreciate is the fact that there are layers to you, okay? So now I'm starting to warm up to you a little bit more and I understand why you and your finger waves always act the way you do when you go out in public, honey. You've had it hard, okay? Not just hard in your house with the man that sleeps in a separate house, but hard in life. So she starts to explain that her mom was not there. You know, of course she explained in previous episodes, her mom had a substance abuse problem. So Marie was saying that when her mom wasn't there, she wanted to die. And so she said, then when she became 18, she had Jerez and that gave her life new meaning. So she decided that she was gonna be there for her kids. Um, and that's why she's there almost to a fault because what she lacked, she tried to give them. So that's why she's so smothering and he's not appreciative of what she's done because she kind of went about it the wrong way. But another thing that I took from this scene is 
Jarius needs a male figure. Like the look in his eyes as a 21 year old man, when he heard that counselor speak to him and the counselor was speaking to him as a man. Okay. And he was speaking in his language. He was speaking game talk because, you know, in plays, he likes to play basketball. So he tried to relate to him by speaking to him in a way that he could understand. And just the look in his eyes, let me know that something is missing. And that is the male figure in his life. Cedric ain't it, honey. Cause I mean, honey, Cedric gives me feminine vibes. I'm just going to go ahead and put it out there, honey. That's not a man that I would have sit down and try to explain anything to my son. But I did appreciate this scene. And I feel like if they just continue with the counseling that her and Jerez will be fine. I'm trying to hear up and get to this because I want to get to the meat and potatoes, honey. I'm pissed. Okay. So um, after that scene, then we see, um, we see uh, Latrice and she's at Goddess Lentz. She wasn't really in this episode much. I kind of missed her and old Cliff, okay? Because I'm used to Cliff popping up, honey, saying what he going to say and speaking his speech. And we got to just sit through it, okay? I kind of missed you, Cliff. Where were you tonight? Anyway, she wasn't doing too much talking, but she did say she will not be attending that brunch, honey. She was like, no, fool me once, shame on me. Fool me twice, get the hell on, okay? I will not be attending that brunch. No, ma'am, Pam. Then we go back to Letitia, and she's meeting Antoinette at the um, Mississippi Civil Rights Museum. And so they're talking about the struggle that black people face. They're looking at some of the um, exhibits and then Letitia starts to get overwhelmed and they see all these things that have happened to black people. And what kind of rubbed me wrong about this scene, even though it was a very powerful scene, don't get me wrong. I don't trust Antoinette. I just don't trust her. Cause just last episode, it's like when you get with Latrice, you start talking something totally different and then you start lying. Because you told Latrice last episode, this lady said something about your hair. No, she didn't. When you guys had a sit down and a come to come to Jesus moment, she said, I did say something about that wig slipping to the back. And you laughed it off. But when you got with Latrice, it was something totally different. So when I see you here with Letitia, I just feel like you're going to spin it as soon as you get back with Latrice. So, I mean, you kind of tainted the moment because you're so fake. You're a flip-flopper. I don't trust you at all. So... They went through the muse museum and then they start to talk about the brunch. So Antoinette says in her confessional, you know, although I don't like the brunches, I will be there to help and I do want them to be successful. I feel like that's another lie, but okay. That's what you want to say, honey. Speak your speech, child. So then we move back over to Tambria. As I said, I ain't got nothing for Tambria, honey. She went on a date with some man that was wearing, looked like he was wearing some, uh, some of those what's those jeans they used to be true religion jeans honey he had his true religion jeans on and he had a v-neck on honey that says all i need to say okay let's move forward then um we go back over to um oh so then we go back to the brunch okay so now we're at the brunch we're at leticia's brunch and she's setting everything up and she's getting ready because this is her big announcement. She's going to announce Ferris Street. She's very excited about this. Tambria is going to be hosting. Hopefully she don't do too much talking, honey, because I can't take too much. And then, um, so we start to see people arrive. Okay, Antoinette arrives with her Caucasian friend, Kaylin. Okay. And then uh, Marie shows up with Essie, honey, because Marie said, I will bring back up this time, honey. Essie was unavailable last time, and I had to knuck a few buck on my own, but this time I will have backup. And then we see um, some of the other ladies fall in, and here comes Kaylin and all these other people, honey, child, whatever. And so that goes around the room and starts to speak to everyone. So then she gets to Marie, honey, and Marie don't forget nothing. She went up to Marie, how are you, lovely? And baby Marie was like, get your fake ass on, girl. That's what she wanted to say. But she was like, oh, you can speak to me today because you're not with Latrice. And I felt that. I'm like, you know what, Marie? We might be more alike than I thought, aside from the finger waves. Because, honey, no ma'am. No ma'am. I mean, that's an editorial look, but just for my everyday, just going to the grocery store, just going to the local Walmart, wave, finger waved up, no, I wouldn't be able to do it. Okay, so... She was like, no, I do want to, I mean, I, I'm my own person. I'll speak to, I'm like, girl, go sit down, honey. Marie see straight through you, honey, and I don't blame her. So as they're getting on with this, with this brunch, they get up and start doing these affirmations. Now, mind you, Kaylin is the Kim Zosiak of this scene. But see, the difference between Kaylin and Kim Zosiak is that Kim Zosiak knew how to play her position. Kaylin, honey, honey. I got some words for you. Now let's get into it since we're going to get into it. So 
Tambria starts to say these affirmations. I'm a strong black woman and, and this and that. And Kaylin's like, oh, well, I'm actually a white woman. Well, we know, honey, just don't say that part, okay? And I, she's holding the councilman's hand and he's trying to tell her his name. And she's like, what is it? What? Girl, you don't have to keep asking 55, 50,000 times. He said his name, honey. Just sometimes you just have to be like, oh, okay, nice to meet you. Oh, idiot. So then as we're going through, Tambria proceeds to ask, who here has experienced racism? I'm like, everybody should be raising their hand, honey, because I mean, I'm from the South. I had a man once call me gal. I will never forget it. I was working in the service industry and he said, hey, gal, bring me some more tea. Baby, when that man said gal, honey, needless to say, it was no tea being brought over there that day. Honey, I had to go collect myself. I had to go, I had to go collect myself because honey, these people will try you. They will try you. So she asked who has experienced racism. And then, so one person didn't raise their hand. I think her name was Kim. And so Tambria was like, I was right there with you, okay? Until, I, okay, I don't like to get gas for myself. So I go to a full service gas station. And I was there and I was waiting for my guest again. I was waiting quite a while. And then an older Caucasian lady pulled up and he comes out. And I'm like, am I not getting service today? I'm like, oh my God, girl. Ugh. Girl, just say you went to the gas station and the man didn't wait on you because the white woman came. So you had to wait like Negroes tend to do. Just say that. Girl, oh, shut up, honey. Do you ever bring your voice down just one octave? That's all I'm asking. It ain't gotta be much, just bring it down one octave. All right, so I don't wanna get sidetracked. So then they're ex telling their experiences and then Letitia says, well, you might not know you've experienced racism, but in Mississippi, you have experienced it. And some of us more than others because of, because of colorism. Now, me being darker, I may have experienced more than you have because I'm darker than you are. And so Tambria definitely understood because in our community, there is a light skin, dark skin thing. It just is. I mean, there's no way around it. Antoinette starts piping up, honey. This is when the mess gets started. So Antoinette is like saying, well, I'm in a predominantly male white field and I don't feel like it's any different with your skin tone. There is a difference. People treat you differently. Even back in slavery days, honey, there was a house in word and there was a field in word. Okay. If you were fair skinned, you were in the home. You were inside the house. Honey, did you read any book during black history month or even in school at all? Honey, I know you were married to a white man, honey, but don't get stupid. Like girl, colorism is definitely real. So as they're talking about their experiences, Kaylin gets up and excuses herself. So Antoinette follows her. She's like, I have to go make sure she's mentally okay. And so then Letitia was like, well, since this is my brunch, let me go make sure everything is okay. So they go out and Kaylin is boohoo crying. We don't talk about black people. We don't talk about you. Girl, what the hell are you talking about? If y'all didn't talk about black people, if y'all weren't killing us every five minutes, there will be nothing to discuss. Girl, we have been oppressed for 400 plus years. How dare you make this moment about you? You are standing out here crying with this dang on fascinator on the side of your dang on head, crying about something that doesn't even make sense. And then they come out and they're pacifying her and trying to explain to her, no, not you, not you. We're just saying, girl, please, we don't owe you an explanation. This was your opportunity to learn. Okay, what you should have done is set your long face self in that room and say, wow, I had no idea what you ladies have gone through. Instead, you get up and make it about you. We can't have nothing. We can't even have a moment. Internet don't bring that girl nowhere else. Yes, I said bring, okay? Because I done got real mad. Do not bring this girl anywhere else. Okay, so you want us to feel bad that we are expressing ourselves about what we've been through historically? Like that doesn't make any sense. How dare you get offended off of our oppression? Karen, please. Like girl, shut up. And then they're sitting out there and she's like, well, 
I just don't understand because we don't just sit around and talk about black people. They're trying to make it like that. We hate black people. You do hate black people. It may not be you, but your people, they hate us. Some of them hate us, honey. It's the reality. Nobody's going to try to pacify their reality because you don't want to accept it. That is crazy. Okay. You sound crazy. And quite frankly, you should be slapped. Okay. You should be slapped. So you're telling me that they don't hate black people. So I'm trying to figure out how George Floyd died. I'm trying to figure out how Breonna Taylor died in her home while asleep, while black. I'm trying to figure out why we were hosed, why we couldn't drink at the same water fountains, why we couldn't go and sit at restaurants and sit at the counter. I'm trying to figure out why we were segregated and we couldn't attend the same schools. Y'all don't hate us? Okay. Honey, are you present? Like, I don't understand what you're even talking. Child, listen. All I have to say is I don't want to see another scene with Kaylon or Kayvon or whatever the, her name is. I'm going to call her Karen. I don't want to see another scene with Karen, okay? And then who we need to make a permanent cast member is Latrice's PR person, honey, because she came out and broke it down to Kaylon so eloquently, eloquently. And she let her know, hey, this is about their history and this is about what historically we have gone through. This is not a personal attack on you. Okay, so you need to go back into that room and you need to sit down because this is a teachable moment, quite frankly. Okay, you need to go in and learn. And answer that, I don't know, child, oh, you just rubbing me all the wrong way, honey. You sitting up here holding her hand as she go back inside. Let me tell you something. If the roles were reversed, honey, you would be outside crying by yourself. Let's just keep it real. Would nobody come outside and hold your hand and slowly walk you back inside? Well, I mean, I have to make sure she's okay. She's fine. We're talking about what we've gone through as black women. It has not always been easy and still is not. So why should we have to completely stop the brunch to go out there and give her a pacifier? Girl, get out of here, child. And then this is where Marie came in. Now, Marie, now normally I don't agree with you, honey. For the last few episodes, I've been like, Marie, go ahead on now. But tonight, honey, you did that. So Marie's sitting here looking at her like, girl, are you serious? So then she goes, because I don't know if the rest of them were just on, I don't know if it was dog food they were on or what, because they're just sitting here listening to Kaylin speak her speech. Honey, we don't want to hear it. And the councilman taking his sip of water, honey, because he's thinking about the movie Get Out. And at this moment, he's thinking he ready to get the hell out because this is foolishness. So Marie goes, um, I don't mean to interrupt you and everything. Okay, girl, you're speaking your speech. All right, we got it. But this is Latrice's moment. I mean, Leticia's moment. And we want to hear what she has to say. And then Marie in her confessional was like, I'm trying to figure out why you offended about our history. This is black history. This is what we've gone through. Why are you offended? And I am with you, Marie, honey. I am with you. Why are you offended about what somebody else went through? That is crazy. We don't sit at home. The media has made black people think that white people don't like the media. So the media made y'all wear white sheets and chase us down? and burn our houses up? Girl, go on, on, child. Girl, shut up, honey. Please shut up. So then, as Marie is trying to say what she needs to say, Kaylin starts to get cocky. This is how, this is how white people manipulate us. Because just a few minutes ago, you were crying. Now, all of a sudden, the tears have dried up, and now you fussing and going toe-to-toe -to -toe with Marie and tells Marie, you're a nobody. Girl, look here. Baby, but Essie wasn't too far, child. Essie stood up on the side of Kaylin and she was like, no, you're a nobody. You don't even know Marie. And honey, the councilman slowly slithered on up. He's like, I'm gonna go. Honey, he did that church finger and exited stage left. He was like, I can't, I can't be involved in this, honey. I didn't sign up for this. So Marie and Kaylin are going toe to toe. And then Marie says, you know, don't tell me I'm a nobody. This ain't the 60s, this ain't the 50s, okay? And then the girl was like, well, come here then. I was waiting on to say, well, come here, gal. Girl, look. Honey, ooh, this episode had my pressure all the way up, child. I ain't been this upset since Chris and Paige from Married at First Sight, honey. This has had my, this got my nerves all the way bad. 
Poor Letitia, honey, you can't have a you can't have a brunch to save your life, honey. Just send out an email. Why don't y'all do a Zoom call? Cause there's no way you gonna get through it, honey. I will send a tweet out and let them know you wanted to discuss Fair Street. Let's do that, okay? Let's send out a mass tweet because, oh, child. The fact that this lady, and then she starts saying, uh, oh, I guess I attacked you. Let me guess, I attacked you. So now you're making fun of what we went through. And Antoinette, let me speak directly to you. You sat there. Now you ran out. You ran out to go hold her hand and make sure she was mentally okay. But you sat there and watched her disrespect another black woman in your presence. And you did not say a word, honey. You didn't say anything. Girl, you're done, okay? I don't have nothing else for you, honey. It's no way to redeem yourself in my eyes. I don't want to hear nothing. Y'all can leave down in the comments below what you feel about it. The, the episode ended on to be continued. I don't know what's going to continue on, child, but all I know is the fact that you sat there, Antoinette, and let that lady disrespect Marie like that, whether you like her or not, we are all the same skin tone, honey. We are all African-American. We are all black people in the struggle. And the fact that you went out there and pacified her, but let her attack Marie, you and your lace wig, get out of my life, honey. All right. Well, that sums up my review for the Bell Collective this evening. I couldn't even really just give it to y'all like I wanted to give it to y'all because I was almost shaking as I was doing this, honey. I was so upset, so upset between Tambria and her voice and this girl and her racist ways and her gaslighting. I, I it's, Child, this is all I could give y'all, honey. Please don't hesitate to like, comment, subscribe, share this with a friend. I'm trying to grow my channel. I love each and every one of you. I will read your comments. I am open to an open dialogue. If there is something that you do not agree with, I am more than happy to discuss. Thank you all and have a very great weekend. As always, stay safe, stay blessed, spread love, not germs. Peace.